Welcome back to another episode of Low Tech Garage, and today we're gonna to share a little bit more about the MGB, uh, and I'm gonna share with you basically the top 10 things I love about this vehicle. So as many of you know, I've been refurbishing the MGB behind me here for about the last couple of weeks, um, and during that time, I've got to learn a lot more about these cars and thought I'd share with you in detail the things I really enjoy about them. So the first thing I really love about the MGB is definitely the styling. You know, instantly you know what you're looking at and it is really that quintessential British sports car look. In this case, British racing green. I mean, you can't get more British than that. Um, but just the little single chrome headlights, the chrome windshield surround uh, with the triple wiper setup, and obviously, as we come around here, the little wire wheels as well. And the styling certainly continues from the back of the car too. As we come up into the very functional interior with a set of analog dials and a manual shifter in your hand. The next thing that I think is great about these, especially for enthusiasts who may not have a lot of space, but really wants to have a fun classic car is the size. And as you can see, it's way down there. Um, I am not that tall of a person and this thing is a rather small car. And that's kind of great because it doesn't take up too much space. If you have like a single car garage, this will easily fit in it and you have room to work around it, which can be great, especially if you're a place that has uh, drastic seasons or anything like that. You can keep the car tucked away, but work on it during the winter seasons and keep it out of the elements as well. Thought this would be a fun size comparison too. So this is the, uh, spare wheel off of our 96 XJS. Uh, so by modern standards, this is not that big of a wheel. Um, it's only 17 inch, but if you look at the wheel and tire combo, and you compare it to a little MG over there, you start to get the idea of the scale of this little thing. And maybe this is a good example too. So here we have small block Chevy Everyone puts these in everything because of their size and compactness. Now let me show you the little 1800 that this MGB runs on. And here she is. And that motor makes about 95 horsepower, uh, which may not seem like a lot, but it's more than adequate to get this car down the road and have a lot of fun doing it. And just another perspective again on the size for everyone. And another thing uh, that I really like, so number three here, is the parts availability. So um, as much as this thing is uh, 78, so about 45 years old, and this car was around since 1962, you can get every part for these. Uh, whether it's on eBay or a bunch of other parts suppliers, it is very easy to get the parts. Uh, and as I did my homework on this, I realized that you can actually buy a complete brand new body for these. Um, so, you know, for the more uh, advantageous home restoration folks out there, if you needed a whole new MGB body, you can literally go online and click buy and a whole shell will show up to you brand new and rust free. And as someone that's had some unique cars during my life, uh, ones that are hard to find parts or you're buying used parts that then need to be rebuilt, that can be extremely expensive, time consuming and sometimes frustrating. Uh, the ability just to be able to go online find exactly what you want, brand new, already remanufactured, so on and so forth, makes the restoration process so much more enjoyable. And for number four, um, really I'm focused on the simplicity of this thing. There is a true beauty in the simplicity of classic cars and this car is no different. Uh, everything is basically mechanical um, and it can be adjusted using screwdrivers, wrenches, so on and so forth. Uh, and really, there is something really nice about working on this. There's no need to plug a laptop in. There's no O2 sensors, anything like that, fuel injection. Um, and it really makes for a great experience when tinkering on these and getting it to run right. Uh, you know, I spent quite a lot of time tuning the carburetor on this, so she ran great. Uh, and it was awesome just being able to make minor adjustments here and there and really get things dialed in uh, and really kind of go back to the old school days where you're pulling out the spark plug to see the color, to make sure the uh, engine mixture is running well and things like that. Um, you know, the simplicity is not just under the hood, it's inside the uh, cabin as well. 
um, and equally underneath. Um, and it really just makes for that classic car driving experience as well as the fun in maintaining and owning these cars. Obviously, we've seen the simplicity under the hood a couple of times here. Um, so, you know, we just have a, a carburetor, a distributor, and just your basic engine in here. No uh, fuel injectors, no nothing. And the same can be said in here. There's no touch screens, no nothing. Nothing digital at all. And really that's a good segue to number five, and that is the analog driving experience. So as much as it's a small car and also it is uh, not very powerful, you get that true analog driving experience. The steering wheel is very direct and connected directly to the wheels. Um, same go for the brakes with just a hydraulic braking system. You have your manual gearbox um, and you know you see your tack coming up and going down just as you're actuating the throttle and clutch. Uh, and it really makes for that kind of driver focus experience. Even if you're not doing triple digit speeds, it makes for so much fun. Um, and I'm gonna cut here and I'm gonna take you along for a quick ride and you can kind of experience that analog driving experience with me. So I think also, as we talk about this, I think our drive checks the box of um, number six. Again, that driving experience, it kind of crosses over, right? So not only is the car analog, but the way it drives uh, really kind of translates that to you when you're going down the road. Um, and it makes for a fun car. And actually it's kind of modern feeling compared to the other cars of its age. You know, it is a unibody uh, and you can tell that. Uh, and it means you can kind of chuck it around and really run it through the gears and it really puts a smile on your face. And for number seven, and this may not be uh, the same in let's say the UK and other parts of Europe, but here in the US, these things are super unique. You do not see them all the time uh, and it's great. You get to be a little bit different and really have that awesome classic car motoring experience. So for all our US followers, I think you can attest for the most part that there just aren't a ton of these out here on the road. If you're going to your local car shows um, and you know, showing up there, especially for the classic cars, it's gonna be littered with tons of muscle cars, but it's gonna be pretty rare to see this badge in the parking lot. I don't know about all our followers out there, but I have to say that I enjoy being a little bit different and that's why we have the cars we have in the collection here at the garage as well. And I think number eight, um, this may not be apparent to most as I've just talked about the size of the car and that it's small and it can fit in a one car garage and you can still work on it um, and really how compact it is, but actually it's surprisingly roomy. So I'm at right around six foot tall um, and I'm not really crushed in here. I've got plenty of room down by my feet um, and you know, I'm still protected by the windshield here and do not feel cramped in here at all. And just to show you guys, as we come down here into the footwell, these things are super deep. So it certainly as a passenger, you could be over six foot and be more than comfy in here without your knees crammed up towards your chest. I think that's really important to share because it lets folks know that maybe even though this is a small car, that it doesn't mean just because you're six foot two, you can't have one of these and enjoy it and uh, really use it all the time. You know, there's a, a lot of classic and exotic cars out there and some that are way more expensive than this that, you know, you may have paid six figures for, but your head is bouncing off the ceiling in there if you're anything over six feet. This car is not that, and considering its size, that's pretty awesome. And really number nine kind of continues that concept that it's actually kind of a practical car. Again, it's a two-seat sports car, but it has a bunch of storage even with someone kind of in the six foot range sitting in the car. Let me show you what I mean. So here's inside the trunk. We have 
full size spare. Um, but if you look in here, you've got all this height that you can put luggage in, or if you're going to the grocery store, um, and it tucks in nicely over here. You got plenty of storage. Um, and as we pan over here, we got a few little things stashed over here already, but there is just a ton of room in the trunk, even with this full size spare sitting in top. And also with the front seat folded forward, you have access to this whole tray area back here for storage as well. And I think I touched on this in one of the other videos, um, but basically, obviously we have the, the top stowed away here and there is a tonneau that you can attach that covers this back area behind the seats. And as you can see, it snaps down in this area, which actually gives you a completely concealed uh, and weatherproof storage area that you can put, you know, day bags or again, more groceries, maybe a toolkit, things like that. So actually between the trunk and this area, you can get a ton of stuff in this little sports car. And number 10, well, this car is just a bunch of fun. Uh, as you've seen in some of the videos of me driving, it's just a blast to drive. Uh, it is just an awesome driver's car. Again, like I've touched on, it's not a ton of power. And honestly, you don't need a bunch of power to have fun. And this is the prime example of it. So if you've been thinking about getting an MGB, I highly recommend you going and looking at one. Um, certainly look at the uh, buyer's guide I put out there too. Uh, so you know what to look out for in these cars and uh, maybe what years are better than others for certain features. Uh, but I highly encourage you to get out there and give one a try because they're a bunch of fun. They're very approachable cost-wise. And equally, if you need to do maintenance or restore them, they are not that expensive to maintain either. So I hope you guys like this video. Uh, if you enjoy these types of videos, you know, the things that we love about the cars in the shop, our buyers, guys, things like that, as well as the restoration series, please drop a comment below and let me know your thoughts. Um, also, if you are new to the channel, please, please subscribe. It really helps us grow this thing. Uh, you know, the goal is to continue to put out content like this. We love our British cars and classic cars, and we want to keep that content coming for you. Um, and also while you're subscribing, definitely hit that bell and feel free to drop comments in there and let us know what you think about the shop, the cars we're working on, the projects, so on and so forth, because we really love engaging with you guys um, and, you know, just the support from the community as well. So I hope you really enjoyed this. More content to come. The XJS getting ready for paint is coming up here super soon. So uh, yeah, until the next one, thanks a lot.